Hey guys, so it's almost 2 in the morning. <laughs> um, I've been doing a lot of late night videos. I kind of like them. Um, I just got out of work and I've been trying to catch up with videos. Um, main reason is because I don't, I guess I'm struggling with, um, now that I'm back working um, for someone else as well as working for myself, I struggle with the schedule now adding more hours into that um, but I think this is good energy for me to create this video because I think in many ways this um, retrograde has really been putting a lot of thoughts in my head that I feel like I want to share um, I've told a couple of people about this video that I wanted to make which really had to do with self-love and I didn't want to come on here and just do a video that everyone has done before explaining how important it is to understand it but I really wanted to give heaviness towards how important it is um, in a different way like giving you an example that I really feel will stick and really be super important so that way you guys can kind of um, you know connect and, and see, and, and anybody can connect with it, in fact, any, any people from all different parts of life can connect. Um, so I titled this video Self Love or Disease because I think it's really important to understand that there's only two options when it comes to how you live your life. Um, a lot of people could probably argue with me and say that there's a such thing as selflessness and there is, but ultimately it comes to the level that you take it to. And that really also helps define whether you're pushing self-love or disease as well. So, the reason why I say self-love or disease, and by the way, I did not prepare this video at all. This is me coming to you guys um, with thinking about this video for about like three weeks now, really wanting to put this out there, really wanting to, like, you know, having conversations with people, whether doing readings or whether just speaking to friends, and I continuously said, I want to come out with a video for this. I want to come out with a video for this. And I just came in the house, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to make it tonight, because rather than be so focused on what to say, it's just like, just say it already. Um... So, and I have one person listening so far, so that's awesome. Love you too, Heather. <laughs> um, so basically, I want you guys to, guys to understand the difference between the two options. If you're not feeding self-love, it's as simple as understanding that you are feeding the opposite of it, which is disease. And when I say disease, I want you guys to understand why it is disease. Self-love is the destination. It has been the destination since you were born. It has been the destination since you opened your eyes into this realm. It is the destination before you even got here. It is the destination after you leave here. Self-love will always be the destination in an infinite, continuous life that has different lifetimes that are set over and over and over. Self-love is always the destination. You can literally not love other people or be able to give love to other people unless you have love for yourself. I like to pull my little cup of what I have. Today I have kombucha. Um, <laughs> it's not water. I usually use this cup because I talk a lot about Saturn and Uranus. Um, but I want to talk about how this is actually applying to self-love today. Um, and I want to talk about it without always mentioning astrology because although that is my language and that is the language of a lot of people who listen to my videos there's sometimes that I know that my friends and supporters just want to hear it in in English <laughs> so this is what I mean by this so let's say you have this cup right and this cup is filled with knowledge and energy beautiful energy and it's filled with nourishment right um think about the fact that like whether this is kombucha, whether this is um, water, whatever you want to consider this with, let's stay away from the idea of it being something like alcohol. Um, but let's say this is the nourishment, right? You fill this cup with nourishment and let's say the cup that you fill with nourishment, right? You go to the store and you purchase that nourishment, okay? Um, or you walk to 
the fountain and get this water, okay? Whether people think it's free, time is not free. So the time that it takes to get to the fountain is the same concept of the amount of money that you spend in Whole Foods or Acne or any place that you go to get this water, right? So you fill this cup, okay? And then you have your neighbors and the people that you care about. And you offer this cup. And you offer this cup, you offer a sip of this cup to everyone around you. And ultimately, at the end of the day, after you offer so many sips, it comes to the idea of the cup is now empty. I talk about this a lot in the Aquarius video. And again, I'm trying to shy away from astrology with this particular video because I want everybody to understand where I'm coming from. But if you do take the time to go look at that, I would love for you guys to take time to do so but i talk about it a lot in the aquarius video because it has to do with the idea of being the person who collects all the information and then goes and gives so much knowledge to other people and forgetting to take a sip of the cup themselves and it's so important to understand that you cannot give anything in this cup to other people if it is low so look at it the same way when you think of self-love. If your self-love, the, self, the amount of love that you have for self is low, how do you expect to give your cup to somebody? How? How does that work? A lot of us are so obsessed with the idea of merging or being in relationships or helping family members or friends or whatever the case or even validation. I mean, I can admit I can't even explain to you how many times I've had a struggle with that in life of validation, of doing something right to the point where when I go to somebody else and I tell them and other people might even say, oh, this person always needs somebody to tell her she's doing a good job, not realizing that I am suffering myself from not feeling worth worthy enough, so I need someone else to validate my worth. And that is disguised for other people as boasting or bragging and it's really a call for help to say i don't feel worthy but ultimately at the end of the day it comes to the fact of that if you don't have enough in your cup how do you expect to give to other people if you don't have enough in your cup why would you be so concerned with what other people think? Your concern is to be to fill your cup so you can give yourself validation. How do you know the people that you're seeking validation from actually have their cups full? We spend so much time asking other people what we should do in our life that we focus so much on other people's idea of what it is to be worth something that we don't even take time to fill our own cup with knowledge of what it means to be worth something. Not realizing that our ideas of perfection are all so very different that you can ask somebody who you think has the lifestyle that you're looking for and ultimately at the end of the day might be struggling or might be going through something and it looks so pretty on the outside, but their cup might not be filled. But then instead, we tell ourselves, but they look like they have the right lifestyle. But that's the lifestyle that I want. But this is the goals that I have and this is how I'm going to achieve those goals. But if I stay on this pathway that such and such tells me to do, I'm going to get there. But if I get validated by this person or the people around me or the job that I have or whatever the case may be, right? Materialistic things. If I go and get the car, if I go and get the girl, if I go and get the guy, if I go and get the jewelry, if I go and get the perfume or the skincare or makeup or whatever the hell means something to you to show your worth, you're now feeding materialistic things, not spiritual things. You're not feeding what actually fills your cup. You're relying on continuously buying cups that are not filled. And if you have so many cups, well, that's worth something, right? Because you have the cups to fill. Other people don't even have the cups to fill, right? They might have one cup. But let me tell you something. That's feeding a disease. Because there might be somebody that has one cup and is filled to the top. And a person that has ten cups and has nothing in any of those cups. 
but because it looks good on the outside, because there's things to count and there's quantity, it makes you feel like you're not worth it, that's feeding a disease. Because now it's the beginning of thinking you have to do X, Y, and Z that's not actually filling your cup internally. Filling, you're actually filling it outwardly. You're filling an idea. You're filling a concept. You're, you're feeding other people's perception of who you are when that's really not who you are. And ultimately, you're tricking yourself to thinking that that's the kind of person you are because you're feeding this disease that you're worth something based off of the things that you have rather than what you actually have. And that's the reason why it's so important to understand the difference. If you are not doing something that you love, now I'm going to talk a little bit about astrology slightly, right? Venus in retrograde. A lot of us are contemplating our jobs, contemplating our worth, contemplating whether, you know, everything that we're going through right now, is it really worth all this shit? Is this really healthy for me? This relationship, the job that I have, the house that I live in, the neighborhood I'm in, you know, the partnerships, right, that I'm building or the business that I own. We're starting to contemplate what's really important inside and out. You're reflecting on those things. You're reflecting on money, not just money, but full value, right? So... A lot of us are starting to really dig deep, right? Because we had that whole, this is Scorpio season, and we're, and we're digging deep, and Venus is in Scorpio in retrograde, and we're going so deep into the concept that, like, I've been seeing these posts of, like, I'm better than this, I don't have to deal with this, you know what, screw this, you know, I want to start my own company, I want to... You know, I don't want to deal with this relationship. It's not good for me. You know what? I'm just going to, like, take a trip to Guam or Egypt. Or I'm going to take a trip to the motherland to discover who I am. Or, you know, it's it's constantly going into the ideas of what's going to help you understand your identity. What's going to help you connect to who you truly are within. And those are beautiful things. But then there's a lot of us that are also struggling with that and we're still holding on to walls and trying to say, no, 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 no. I don't want to, I don't want to face these things. I don't want to confront what I really feel about myself. I don't want to deal with that. And we're still holding on to these walls. We're still listening to what other people are saying we should do. But I'm here to tell you that anything that does not feed that worth anything that does not make you a better person anything that does not make you confront how you truly are and make you realize that you need to be better and that shit is uncomfortable it's real uncomfortable we don't want to sometimes see mirrors of ourselves we don't want to sometimes face the fact that we do have nasty sides of ourselves we do have parts of ourselves that totally need healing healing that you know what is distracted by the same place of work that you tried to say to yourself is what makes you worth something. It's a distraction. That job that you have that takes all your time and you don't have time for the people that actually matter is a distraction. Okay, complete distraction. The jobs you have, the people you hang out with, happy hour, all that shit that doesn't actually feed enlightenment of who you are so that way you can invest in self is a distraction. You could tell yourself all damn day, oh, I'm getting this bread, oh, I don't care about this shit, I'm about that money, right? The famous line, fuck with me and get some money. Money? Is that what really is actually feeding your self-worth? Money. Think about it. The, the music we listen to, right? The shows we watch, the people we follow. Distraction. Because if you had to follow yourself is really the question, what would you think? Every time we post these photos, every time we post these videos, what would you think if you actually saw what you posted? 
some of the stuff that I post, I actually erase because I think about it and I'm like, what would I, like, how do I look right now? Like, yeah, there's sometimes that I joke, but like, how do I look right now? What does that say about myself? Not what other people are going to think. And sometimes that also gets to me, but what does that say about myself? These lives that we live where we, you know, now everybody's a fucking model on Instagram and like Facebook. Oh my goodness, everybody's a model. Now the funny thing about it, and I can tell you guys this, is that I used to be a model. And I would get paid like, I mean, starting wage as far as like a younger girl. I remember I got $500 for like a Six Flags promotion. And it was so dope. I had Sarah Michelle Geller's makeup artist who was on the set. And I was just so fascinated by that, right? And I can only think about the models that have to throw up in the bathroom just to take the picture to get $20,000 and then throw up again and can't eat regular food or even barely drink water because they have to have this image, right? And now these girls are going out there and like just getting some amateur ass photographer to take these photos on iPhone and we download apps like Facetune and this and that and like spend all this money to create this lifestyle on Instagram that makes it look like we're so fucking glamorous. Like, we're doing things in our life. And that same girl might actually not be doing shit. That same guy actually might have bills up the squazoo because he's spending more time focusing on the image that he's creating online to appease other people. That he's actually not focusing on the bills that he owes so he can invest in self. Or just the simple fact of, like, the people that have children who are still taking photos out, like, ass out, you know, all types of shit, not worrying about how that's going to affect their kids years from now. Because they're creating an image. This image online is just, like, ridiculous. Feeding a disease, making most people, we don't even realize as a generation we are becoming so narcissistic. Oh, look at my life. Look at how I am so fabulous. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me in this fucking 20 set, I don't even know how to, it's like a 20 story thing, like I half of the time cancel out on you guys' shit because I'm not following you this much. I get weird about me posting more than like six stories in my story or whatever they're called because I'm like, eventually I'm like, this makes it look like I'm not doing anything but posting just my life, like why? Disease. So focused on what to put on a phone and you're not actually looking at the scene around you. You're not actually communicating with the people around you. Your food gets cold because you're literally taking pictures of your food for 20 minutes before you eat it. And then half of the time, like, you see reviews about the food being cold. I wonder if that person actually ate their food right away. Especially being in the restaurant business. I've seen it all the time. Focus more on tagging your friend in a photo. And yet you like, it's weird. You have two different conversations. You tag a friend and you have a conversation in front of everyone, right? It's a public thing. And then you like go on like text and you're like, yeah, I just tagged you. Okay, so you have two different conversations going on. One where it's public and one where it's private. And like, I just, disease disease and we all do it I do it myself and I and I, these are the things I've been thinking about like what are we feeding right now what are we feeding what are the things that actually matter what do you like to do when the world if the world just like stopped for a moment what's the first thing that you would think to do self-love those things matter the first person that you want to see the music you would listen to if it was like your last moment. Those are what matter. Investing in yourself is what matters, right? We spend so much time focused on the fact that like school, for example, right? I'll give you a perfect example. I want to go to fashion school. My fashion school is almost $12,000. Realistically, I'm thinking to myself, I don't have $12,000. 
And I've listened to people around me go, how are you going to go to school if you don't have that money? You don't have the parents that could just pay for your stuff. You don't have money saved because let's be honest, how many times do we listen to certain people and they're like, oh, I have savings. That's wonderful. Unfortunately, I come from a family background where that wasn't a choice for us. We had to work paycheck to paycheck many times. And I learned a lot from that. So now, yeah, I might spend money quicker, but it's usually on things that I need versus what I want. I know some of us don't have savings, right? But then you think about it and you say to yourself, okay, well, you could take out a loan. And that scares some people. But let me also explain to you something. What I thought about to engage with my self-love was, okay, let's say I go and take out a loan now. And damn it. I might have to pay so much money back, but guess what? I invested in myself. And I say this as an example because I've been hearing a lot of people talking about going back to school for something they love because they followed this idea that they were supposed to go to college or whatever, right? That they were supposed to go to because their parents told them or their family told them or this or that or whatever. And they lived a life that they weren't supposed to live. But then they look at the one thing they want and they tell themselves, it's too expensive. I can't afford that. That's too expensive. That takes too much time out of my schedule. I can't do that. Really. But you can do what everyone else told you to do. That took a lot of time. Matter of fact, that took more time than you think because now the time that you took to deliver what other people told you to do, right? Spending your time giving away your self-love, giving them the cup that was your cup, right? You not only gave away the cups that you had, the amount that you filled and you gave it, now the only cup you have left, you gave that away too because now those people need validation from you with your life, right? Your life. They needed validation from you by telling you what to do and seeing if you were really going to do it. That, that was their validation and you followed it. So you took more time away from your life because now you have to actually make up that time you wasted on doing something that you didn't want to do. But it's too much time to take to do what you love. Self-love. A disease is telling yourself, but I did what I had to do to survive. But I did what I had to do to pay bills. But I did what I had to do because I had children and I wanted to show those children that I can put food and clothes, well, it can put food in their mouths and clothes on their back. I did what I had to do. What are you going to tell your children when they ask you, from you telling them you need to live your dreams, what are you going to tell them when they ask you, mommy, daddy, but did you live yours? Mommy, daddy, but how do you have so much faith in me and you didn't have faith for in yourself? You had so much love for this hobby and you chose to ignore it and you expect me to go for that? Or even the other way, right? Mommy, daddy, you wanted me to go to school for such and such degree and that worked out so well for you because you are miserable and you're making me miserable thinking about how miserable you are disease. I'm tired of hearing about how the previous generations didn't have options and they had to listen to their parents and they didn't have the technology that we have. It sucks. It does. Guess what? You had something that the previous generation did not have. You did. It's called evolving. Now, I'm not taking away the fact that there was obviously things that have occurred which have enabled, um, I'm sorry, disabled other people. Like, there's, you know, this is America. If you were a certain ethnicity or you were not American bred or whatever case you want to look at it, then yes, you did have struggles. But my point is by saying to you, having the struggles from previous times disable you from growing now it's not an excuse anymore it's not what's the point in fighting for something and then when you get it you don't know what to do with it what's the, po the point in saying let's vote and you 
have people fight for that idea and then you choose to just say, you know what, my vote doesn't count, so I don't care. How dare you disrespect all those people that fought for that? You have the opportunity to do that now. You don't know what it's like to not have that. So you, let's say that voting, right? Let's say that that actually doesn't work like people claim. So will it literally like hurt you like physically to take your ass to the voting booths and vote? It's gonna hurt you? No. Disease. Some people might be like, really, you're gonna go that far out there that has to do with disease? Yes, it's feeding an image that is an excuse, that is fundamentals of nothing to complain about some shit that you're going to continuously carry weight every single day on and then tell yourself that you can't do something, that things are not possible, that it's just reoccurring things, different things like that. Give you another example. Let's throw something else out there. If you fail at something, I'm going to use a perfect example, and I'm sorry if this person feels offended, but they inspire me, and I don't even really know them that well, but being around their presence in about three hours at an audition made me realize how things that you really want and when you don't get them can really like break you down. So I'm going to use this as an example. Having an audition for something or a chance at something, right, and you don't get it, okay? I'm trying not to be so specific because I feel like I'd be kind of disrespecting this person, but just giving an example of like auditions, okay? I'm going to talk about from a performer's point of view. You go into an audition <clears throat> and you, it's the best thing in the world, like this is the, you know, the moment and you didn't think you could get this far. Let's stop there. I didn't think I could get this far. What do you think happens when you think like that? You start to project it. I didn't think I could get this far. So I'm going to show you that because it's in my aura. And now I'm pushing that energy out and I'm giving that image. And as much as I can tell myself that I'm not doing that, I am. So do you really think that you could get further? No. Being happy with your performance, though, and focusing on the fact that you did get this far, congratulating yourself that you got that far, saying that you are worth getting further, and even if you don't, you still got further because you got past that moment enough to say, I'm going to audition again, even though I did not make it to this round. We must change the way that we think. We must change the way that we speak to ourselves how when we go in meditation or prayer mode and we say to ourselves I really really want something but focus on the fact that why do you want that thing what is it about that thing that you want and if you don't get that thing do you think that it's worth keyword worth do you think that it's worth breaking yourself down all the way down because you didn't get it to thinking to yourself, I wasn't worth it? Or maybe you should start thinking in your mind and say to yourself, maybe that thing that I wanted, maybe I was worth more than that. If we value ourselves more, if we take the time to really say, who am I? Why? Am I worth these things? And really break it down all the way to detail and really talk to ourselves about that. Have conversations with ourselves internally. Connect with source. Connect with your higher energies. Understand that you are a God in the making. And I, I will probably piss so many people off about that and that is totally fine. But as above, so below. And whether you believe in God or any entity, the fact is that if you are a child of something, if you are a creation of something, that means that you have the ability to master your energy in the name of that image. So therefore, you need to respect yourself as such and own up 
to the very being that you are. Because if you do not do that, you are feeding a disease. You are not feeding the destination. And the destination is always self-love. Always. Relationships. Codependency. Feeling like you need someone else to tell you what your value is. The best thing one of my exes told me was to get a fucking hobby. Best thing in the world. Get a hobby. And I was like, how dare you? You're my hobby. I love you. And I don't know how you could say something like that to me. It wasn't until years later when I said that and played that back in my head that I was like, ew. They were my hobby. That specific idea that has is, is shining and is projecting as a person, right? Because I say this a lot in my videos. Um, people are just ideas that are in physical form. They're just ideas. And you can even break that down with the concept of a birth chart, right? You're born at a certain time, in a certain location. No one has the same birth chart for 200,000 years. And that means everyone is completely unique, right? And, like, because of that, you have, like, let's put it this way. You're born. You open a vessel, right? You open a portal from you being born, right? Literally, I mean, when you come out of a woman and it's opening it's literally pushing life into this world that came from a, an idea a seed that was planted and it's in the womb and when it comes out it's human but like it's an idea in a body in a material body so when you're born and the portal opens and pushes you into the world right now everything's connected so it naturally expands it expands, so that's honestly why the universe could continuously get bigger. You're constantly, there's ideas being born, and like, it's like anything. If I have, let's say, something's catching. Okay, if I have a figure like this, right? I hope I don't kill my earring. But if I have a figure like this, and I want to put something in there, it's going to expand. Bam, right? Okay, let's look at it from this point of view. If I want to put something in here, it'll expand so it can fit something in, right? My point is that once that idea opens up, it's that moment, that very moment that is that counts. This is why birth charts work, right? That very moment counts as something. That moment has a stamp based off of everything around it of what personality it's going to have. And some, may, some people that don't study astrology or believe in it, okay, but I can prove that to you in many ways <laughs> through reading your birth chart. Um, but my point is that you're, you have access to that very moment. That's the whole point. That person that is in that coordinate, that is born in that coordinate or those at those coordinates at that time on that day is assigned to that moment. And that moment, if you open that up, is a whole galaxy within itself. All of us are moments. All of us are assigned to a very moment. And within that moment, there's an internal energy in us, a identity. There's a story. There is a reason. There are Akashic records. There are things there that we are our very purpose and only purpose is to discover what that moment represents. But if you let someone else's moment tell you what that moment is, how do you feed that self-love? How do you stand as the moment that you are so that way you can like join another moment and expand? That's the whole point. We're all a small piece of the puzzle. So if we don't allow ourselves to connect with that very moment, we're breaking up the puzzle. The puzzle cannot be solved. Because we won't connect with ours. We're too busy connecting with other people's moments. We're feeding a disease. 
Reason being, again, a positive environment will continue. This is set in Lucy, the movie, the movie Lucy. For those that you, of you that haven't seen that movie, that movie is so deep. It's ridiculous. But Morgan Freeman talks about, and I don't want to say quote for quote because it's not exactly the very quote, but he says, in a positive environment, down to our very cells, right? Because everything is a cell, but like, it's a bigger cell and a bigger cell and then it turns into tissue and then it grows and then it's ultimately coming from a cell. Very like, it's, it's always as above so below and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and expanding and expanding and expanding. And the idea is that if an environment is positive, the cell will reproduce. If the environment is negative, it will self-destruct. So let's talk about that cup again. In a positive environment, you'll just keep refilling your cup. You can give your cup to as many people as you want. Pass that knowledge off to other people so you share the knowledge. And then it's formulated in different perceptions. So you have different angles to look at it, right? My air signs, you know what I'm talking about. Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra. We are so big. And I say we because I'm a Libra moon and Aquarius Pisces rising. Um, for those that will probably be like, you're a Virgo. But that air energy... We like to see things in different ideas, especially my Geminis, right? You like multifaceted things. Everything is a different angle, right? So quick, quick communication. Aquarius, far out there, futuristic, big, large, large ideas. Libras, different sides, seeing both sides to a situation, right? But it's really about connecting on a level of understanding different ideas through different perceptions. That's why we're so obsessed with conversation and so obsessed with Getting to know different people. Sorry guys, I had to say hello to my puppy. <laughs> but, back to what I was saying. With air signs, we're so obsessed with, with getting to know ideas and talking, 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 talking. Talking is communication. It's exchange of ideas, right? Notice how a lot of air signs, when you talk to them about stupid shit, they're just like, okay, that's great. I'm bored. Let's go talk to somebody else, right? It's just like, I want to learn. That is the energy of the ideas that are being passed around. The moments that you're being introduced to, meeting new people, you're being introduced to a moment. But again, it all comes down to the fact of this. How do you get to know other moments, other storylines? Work for other people with their moments. Live out other moments' dreams, right? Other people's dreams. See things from other people's moments, other people's views. How do you do those things and not connect with self? Not fill your own cup. What do you think happens when the cup is not full and it's hungry? Or thirst, in this case, thirsty, right? But think of it from the body point of view. What happens when your body is constantly hungry and there's no food being eaten? It starts to practically eat itself at that point. Self-destruction. Disease. Negative environments. Disease. Y'all talk about all day, I hate Mondays. Get a new job. You don't hate Mondays, you hate your job. Trying to go Monday to Friday, five days out of the week. Oh my God, I did a post a couple years ago talking about this. I did like a whole math thing and I, I did eight hours a day, which is the average hours, right? But then many of us also work two, three jobs, holidays, etc. Right? But just, just with eight hours a day, with two days off, I did the math and I posted this years ago. Based off of 100 years. And then I subtracted 20 of those years because usually, like, you know, some of us get jobs at 16 and then others are lucky enough to have families that put money in our accounts and tell us, oh, I want them to finish school to do the same fucking shit that I did, which is pretty much get a job that they're going to hate one day. And then there's some people that are actually super supportive, but my point is that if you add up the time that you're at work, 
And if you do not like your job, and you add this time up, out of this amount of time, you spend a ridiculous amount of time at work. You spend more time at work than you do anything else. So if you hate your job, how the hell do you fill up your cup? You're walking around with tired, annoyed energy all day, and you do nothing but project that annoyance to the people around you. And you could tell yourself all day, I hate my job, but when I go home, I don't bring that home. Bullshit. Impossible. Home is the mind. I said I was going to make this video without astrology. I'm so sorry. My language. Fourth house. Please, y'all, Google fourth house in astrology. It's about the home. It's about the mind. The home and the mind. If your house is messy, if it is a mess, your mind is most likely messy. Y'all, my house has been crazy. My little apartment has been nuts. There's been stuff everywhere. And it's not even like it's stuff everywhere because I'm like a messy person. I'm not. I'm actually extremely like particular. And like if a dish is in my thing, I'm annoyed. But I've been so busy lately doing so many things. It's like chaos. So understanding that if your house is chaos, it's probably because your mind is chaos. There's no way in hell that you are at peace with chaos around you. If you are, by all means, that's your jam and that's cool. I just, it, personally, it just doesn't, it doesn't match on both sides. It's not mirrored, right? It's not a mirrored image to it. Let me tell you another thing about even the houses to, that could support this. So you have 10th house and 4th house. 4th house is the mind and the home. 10th house is the public um, and your public persona. Who you are outside. Who you are to the world. Which in this particular, um, in, in this country, right, we define a lot by what's your title. Makes a lot of sense. Tenth house is also ruled by Capricorn. I make a lot of fun of, of Capricorn with this. They're so obsessed with persona, like public persona. Cancer is ruling the fourth house. So obsessed with being at home, right? Sleeping so they can connect with their mind. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. And realistically speaking... If your public persona is messed up, if you don't feel like things are working out or that title is not fulfilled of what you feel is per perfection, what you feel is worth something, you're feeding a disease and you're also your mind is chaotic. But many times people will tell themselves, I'm doing it for this reason, feeding a disease. You're not doing it for any reason. Realistically speaking, let's be honest, all this shit that you have going on in your house, all of it is fake. It's material. What's worth? If shit hit the fan and, and war took place, do you think you'd be reaching for your guitar? Do you think that you would be worrying about the TV that you have and what kind of laptop you have or... Do you think you're going to like say, oh my God, my car, I have to go get my car, my Mercedes Benz outside, it needs to be saved from the shit that's happening, the tornado that's going on or the bombs that's going off, right? I have to save it. No. You're thinking about family, if you have a pet, yourself, self-survival, right? Many of us talk a lot about... Um, saving other people in situations of that like that and a lot of us don't realize that like self-survival kicks in things kick in you're like oh my god I have to save like that's the way the cells work that's the reason why when the environment is bad that the cells go against each other self-survival that's what it's about people don't realize that this all connects with disease though if you smoke cigarettes or you drink a lot or you don't have a balanced diet or you, you know, do something that involves yourself in an environment, because I tell, I say this a lot too, like food for thought, food for thought, that idea, right? 
food for thought for thought like that thought is actually food at the end of the day energy is food connecting energy is food that thought itself is energy so when you surround yourself with negative people when you surround yourself in negative environment when you surround yourself in a way where you're just not happy sorry y'all my dog keeps eating nipping at his skin he has allergy issues well, I think you're great. Um, <laughs> but when you when you feed, when you surround yourself with negativity, it's just gonna do nothing but bring that to you, right? Attract. The universe doesn't sit there and take an order and say, "Oh, this person says she doesn't want to be like her mother, or doesn't want to." being abusive and blah, blah, blah. If you keep thinking about something more, like, enough, it, it's going to just attract it. That's how the universe responds to things. It doesn't think about dissecting it for you. It just wants to, like, attract whatever thought is happening, right? Law of attraction. So start thinking that you can get the job that you want. Start thinking that you are worth the audition and and more that you are worth the spot that you will get the girl that you will get the guy you know and you might not get them but you got them in your head that you will get the guy the guy doesn't have to be that guy but you're gonna get the guy right you're gonna go to that country you're gonna get the thing like Start thinking in a positive way. Positive. I have one more thing to say about this. And I needed this more than anything. Another thing we have to look at is, this is major. There's a story about the man, or a lot of people have heard this story. There's a story about the man that is in the ocean and he's drowning. And he says, God's going to save me. He's going to bless me, right? And a boat goes by. And they say, hey, do you need help? And he's like, no, God's going to save me, right? Another boat goes by. No, God's going to save me. He's going to bring me a blessing. Another boat comes by. So the guy drowns, and he goes to heaven. And the guy's like, how could you let me drown, right? The story, I'm totally possibly butchering it. But it's, it's, it's very similar to this. And God says, well, I sent you three boats. Many times we get the blessings that we want and we're so focused on things that have never happened yet that we don't appreciate what we have in front of us. And that also includes the resources that we have, right? We want these things but yet have this image in our head that there could be more though. There could be better. This is not exactly it. We need to focus on the now the very thing that we have right now because nothing is promised including a future so you can potentially feed this image this disease of getting something that you think might be worth it and you already have what is worth it and you say to yourself this may not be it how many times have we canceled relationships with people that we absolutely love or don't take a position because someone else is telling us that there's something else better and why don't we just take this quick money somewhere else and whatever the hell else happens, right? So many times that we focus on the future and not realizing that the future is now. Every second is the future. Every second. I was told yesterday, and I didn't even, I was like, wow, that's really deep, that there's really no moment that's truly the present because when things project, it takes milliseconds for it to process. Well, that makes a lot of sense, and that means that it's not really right now. You might, or you might take in information, someone says something, they say it. When they say it at that moment, you're processing it, but... The future is a second after that when it's fully processed, right? So 
So being that the future is technically now, why are you thinking so far out into a future that doesn't even exist yet? So far out that you don't actually appreciate what is being given to you in the future. You're just so far out there. You're, you're starting to create this idea that has actually not happened. It never happened. You don't even know if it's going to happen. And you tell yourself, that's what's worth it to me. That's what's going to give me my worth. What about right now? What are you worth right now? What makes you beautiful right now? We need to stop feeding the disease of things that just, they don't, they don't support the journey. They don't. We can lie to ourselves all day. And that ultimately, that's the disease. Keep building that disease, that mental illness that's telling you that there's something else out there. Yes, I said it. Mental illness that we all secretly have. We all have it at different levels, but we feed a lot of that energy because we feed the thought that there's something different or something better. So we're feeding this concept, causing us to have this depression because you expected something. Why are you expecting anything? Why? Expectations lead to disappointment. Someone said to me and reminded me that to love someone is to love someone. To actually love them. All these women that get married, men that get married, you know. And I say, I meant to start the sentence off with the women that I've seen with weddings, right? You spend like a year becoming bridezilla at the wedding. Freaking out about the little details, not remembering anymore why you're getting married in the first place. And I'm not saying that's just women, men could do it too. But I'm just saying like, I see it a lot, especially with doing hair and makeup. I listen to conversations and I listen to these women talk about how, you know, the vendors and this and that and Worrying about whether the champagne, I mean, the bridesmaids are walking all over making sure, like, the champagne is popped just right and this and that. And it's like, you know who I think are the coolest brides? The ones that are, they're just happy to be fucking at the wedding. Like, they're just so happy to marry the man that they love, the woman that they love. Right? They don't care. They don't care about all that other stuff. That stuff doesn't matter. After the party is gone, nobody gives a shit anymore. Sorry, it's true. They're off to the next wedding. That's how that works. And then what's next, right? Then you have the wedding. Then you want to go ahead and feed. Now we have to have a child. Now we have to have the house. Now we have to have this. Are you happy in what you're in? Is the person that you're with feeding the destination? Are you feeding the destination? Because the destination is self fulfilled the destination is if you're going to merge with an energy, merge with it to help you continue the purpose. Don't just do it because society says you're supposed to do it. That's when there's a problem. I'm sure I've left some things out that I wanted to say. And maybe there'll be a part two. But I wanted to come on here to express this to you because I think it's necessary during this time especially during the retrograde to express this the destination that's the, the purpose getting to the purpose getting to that point is self-love anything that does not feed the soul to be better does not feed the soul to advance does not support that the soul might need space so it can expand is feeding a disease Oh, one more thing too. One more last thing. Because this is also important. One more last thing. If you are with someone who is... Like, let's talk about it this way. To love something is to also set it free. 
And when I say set it free, I mean give it the space that it needs to expand. I have explained this in another video previously that letting something free does not necessarily mean that you're letting them like sleep around and everything. It does, I don't mean it like that. But when you let something free, you're letting it have space to expand its knowledge, its awareness. You're not up underneath it saying, I don't want you to be around this person or that person or do this or that or whatever because ultimately, now I'm not saying like if, if that the, the thing that they're doing makes you uncomfortable for a reason that has to do with some kind of destruction of them or what you're building together to advance both of you, then yes, you have every right to express that. However, if you're just having a jealous moment for self because you can't face the fact that that person is learning from someone else or that person is experiencing something that's going to actually help the both of you because they're taking knowledge from whatever they're learning from that person or that job or that experience and they're bringing it back to you right because it's like again food for thought you're bringing it back to the table this is what i learned i'm gonna feed you this information so you can download and process it into your computer into your mind right download and process it into your Akashic records and experiences because my time and your time together is going to be greater than just you going out and experiencing things on your own, right? It's greater, literally greater. Because it's more expansion to take in more information. Now we're holding hands and we're offering two brains of thought rather than just one. So, got a little bit deep there. Um, <laughs> sorry. My mind goes there sometimes, but um, my point to you is this. If there is a person that's helping feed thought that's going to help your group of, or your organization or your partnership, don't be selfish. Don't do that. Let that happen. However, if you are with someone who you had an amazing experience and you guys were on the same level and you embraced that experience and then, you know, you start to separate in thought process and it's just not, no matter how much you're coming back towards it, it's just not working, but you keep trying, 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 trying to the point of like beating a dead horse, you are feeding a disease. Because you are not allowing each other to advance on your own. And ultimately, what people don't realize is that if you are really meant to be separating from the two ideas, right? The two ideas going off into their own, time truly doesn't exist. So if you get back together with more advancement, the time that was in between you two... It was just a thought that needed to be explored. How many of us break up with our significant others that really mean something and we go and live our lives for a little bit and come back together and offer ourselves knowledge? Sometimes it's necessary. But what's not necessary is to cry so much over one person or hinder oneself from advancing because they're, you're literally mad at the other person for trying to advance, trying to be honest enough to say, I'm ready to move on to other things, and then hindering yourself from growing, and then ultimately that person could start realizing something, come back, and you're not mentally prepared to be up here with them, because you hindered yourself. You took your cup, you literally just emptied it, have not quenched it in forever and then that person's cup is just full to the top and guess what you're now upset because they get someone else that's on their level because you decided to hinder yourself from growth there's so many concepts in this but ultimately at the end of the day it all comes down to understanding this very factor self-love is the destination and anything other than that is a disease. Don't feed the disease.
feed the love. Because the more love that you feed for yourself is the more love that you can provide for those that you actually care about around you. And it's, it's going to feed and expand more areas to where more love can be conjured for self to believe in more things. And you can share that with your neighbors, who in turn can share with you. And all we can do is continue to just get more expanded as a community of people. Where there is love, there is freedom. And where there is freedom, there is love. And there is knowledge that can be passed to every single person. And knowledge in itself is a form of self-love. Because it's truth. It's not catering to lies. It's not catering to a disease. And it's ultimately what sets us free. Freedom of love and love is freedom. And give yourself that. And believe in yourself and you can obtain anything in this world. Okay guys, I hope that you guys enjoyed my little video. It was not planned, like said. It bounced all over the place. But I hope you guys take time to listen to every aspect. And yes, I jumped from place to place. But it all comes down to that very factor of what I said. And I hope that you really can take that in and process that. Anyway, I'm going to go to sleep so I can conjure up my own self-love. <laughs> But um, I feel really good about this video, and I felt really good coming on here tonight, despite how late it was. And I hope you guys get a chance to watch it. Alright, love you all. Have a good night. Goodbye. Peace, love, and happiness.